Hello students, my name is Divya Gupta and I am a pediatric neurophysiotherapist. I am going to demonstrate the techniques that we use in exercise therapy. This is going to be useful for physiotherapy students and new practitioners. We have with us Mr. Ajay Mandola. He is going to be a dummy patient for us. Today, we will learn how to give relaxed passive movements. And we are going to cover this topic for all the major joints in the body. As the name suggests, passive movements are produced entirely by an external force when there is little or no muscle contraction. The first joint that I am going to demonstrate passive movements for is shoulder joint. And I am going to start with shoulder flexion. I am going to perform that on the left side. Position of the patient is supine line. Position of the therapist is stride standing. Stabilization proximal to the shoulder is provided by the patient's own body weight and distally by the therapist's grasp. If you are performing the movement on the left side, which is the case here, with your left hand, grasp the patient's arm under the elbow. With your right hand, cross over and grasp the patient's wrist and hand. Now, Move the arm through the available range of motion and return. Make sure you apply the principles of passive movement. That is, traction is given along the long axis of the bone. Extension beyond 0 degree is called hyperextension. The patient can be supine, in side lying, prone or in sitting position. If we have the patient in supine lying position, have the patient's shoulder at the edge of the plinth. The position of the therapist, stabilization and grasp is the same as that for flexion. Perform the movement in the available range and then return. Notice here that for hyperextension, I have kept the elbow in flexion. For hyperextension in side lying position, with one hand stabilize the patient's shoulder, with the other support the forearm and wrist. Perform the movement in the available range and return. Make sure there is no element of abduction in this movement. Coming to shoulder abduction and adduction. The position of the patient and stabilization is the same as that for flexion. However, the position of the therapist is walk standing. Holding the same grasp as that for flexion, move the arm out through the available range and return. For ease of completing the arc of motion, we can have the elbow in flexion and then perform the movement. An important point to note here is that to have the complete range of shoulder abduction, there should be external rotation at the humerus and upward rotation of the scapula. Coming to the rotations, internal rotation which is also called as medial rotation and external rotation which is also called as lateral rotation. The patient continues to be in supine lying position. However, the therapist comes back to stride standing position. Whenever possible, it is best to have the shoulder abducted to 90 degrees and elbow flexed to 90 degrees. We call this as the 90-90 position. Grasp the patient's hand by placing your index finger between the patient's index finger and thumb. Place the rest of your fingers and 
the thumb on either side of the patient's wrist thereby stabilizing the wrist with the other hand stabilize the elbow now rotate the humerus by moving the forearm like the spoke of a wheel this is external rotation this is internal rotation or lateral rotation and medial rotation we can also perform in the rotations with the with the arm along the thorax however complete range of internal rotation is not possible in this position coming to the last set of movements at the shoulder joint horizontal abduction which is also called horizontal extension and horizontal adduction which is also called horizontal flexion the patient is in supine lying position with the shoulder at the edge of the plinth the therapist is in stride standing position grasp and stabilization continue to be the same as that for flexion so we start with the patient's arm abducted to 90 degrees as you perform the movement turn your body so that you face the patient's head as you take the patient's arm across the patient's body the speed is uniform and fairly slow in all the passive movements that we perform we keep the elbow flexed for ease of completing the arc of motion to sum it up today we learned the practical aspects of giving passive movements to the shoulder joint of a patient for more details on the principles and indications of passive movements refer to your textbooks thanks for watching